Welcome back to the morning show. It's time for another Wise Guy segment with U of I physics professor Paul Quiat. Paul is going to show us how light interacts with matter and also talk a bit about the polarized sky, right? Indeed, indeed. So, uh, Which one are we kicking things off with first? It looks like we have a pretty cool setup here. We do have a fun setup. So just a quick shout out to my new friends, Beverly, Deirdre, and Fontella, new Wise Guy friends. Uh, nice to meet you yesterday. Uh, so we talked last time about light scattering off the sky and the fact that uh, blue light scatters a lot more than red light. And I had this demo of um, just a, some gelatin with some uh, milk in it. I had a little too much. It was a little hard to see. So we're just going to look at this again. I set it up again. I made a new one. And if we just zoom in to the, uh, to the end of this, we can see that we're going to get a lot more uh, a lot more red that gets through. The blue light is all scattered off. So if you look right in the center, you can see that kind of a red dot. Uh, and so that basically is going to be the, uh, that's going to be the red sunset that we have because we scattered all the, all the blue light out. Okay, so back to, back to uh, so we're going to continue talking about light coming from the sky. And just to, uh, again, to set the stage, light we know is an electromagnetic wave. So if we uh, have the first graphic here, uh, I've got these electric fields that oscillate, for example, here up and down, and they create magnetic fields that are going left and right. And those magnetic fields create electric fields, and those mag create magnetic fields, so we get a wave. And we talked also last time we can think about uh, in an atom what's happening is that the electron, and the next, uh, if we go to the next slide, the electron is sort of stuck to the nucleus. It's like it's on springs to the nucleus. And so the electron, when it wiggles, creates these electric fields. So if I have light coming in, it'll, it'll oscillate. It'll s slosh this charge back and forth in the direction of the light. And then that electron will re-radiate more, more light. And this is the thing where blue is re-radiated a lot more than the, than the red. OK, so if we, um, if we come back to, to here again, so uh, we can think a little bit also about like what direction are those colors gonna gonna come off at, and uh, I have a little demo here, and there's also a graphic, but this is a, 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 a demo of a uh, just a donut here, and. Uh, Okay, this is going to tell us where the light is going to come. If I had to happen to have a charge that was oscillating up and down, it turns out it's going to want to oscillate. It'll come, the light will come off a lot to the sides and basically nothing in the upper direction. So the length of these little stickers is supposed to tell us how much light is going to be going off in all, that, in all those directions. So in fact, if we go back to our, our next graphic here, we can see that uh, this is what the radiation pattern from, this is called an electric dipole where you have charges oscillating back and forth and you see that they're kind of all going off left and right, this is meant to be in a cylinder around the vertical axis, almost essentially nothing's going straight up and down. If we go to the next graphic, it says, shows that just again in a little bit different detail uh, where I've got these oscillating charges going up and down. They create this uh, light that's radiating in all directions off to the side, but not really at all up and down. And so uh, that's what we see in the sort of bottom right graphic that there's no light that's going in the upward direction. It's all going off to the, all going off to the sides. Okay, so if we bring that back to us now in our, in our demo here, so uh, let's see. So if I have light that's coming in and the light were vertically polarized, so the light was like this, okay, that's going to be like my, my donut like this, driving this like this. And so I expect to see that I will have light then coming off to the side. So we're just going to look at this end here. If I vertically polarize light, we see that this is bright. There is light coming off. Right. But if, on the other hand, I had horizontally polarized light like this, that's like having our donut facing this way. So there's not going to be any light coming off. And so if I just rotate this so that now I've got horizontal horizontal polarized, we see that it's really, it should look really dark coming out there. And let's, again, for contrast, here's where it's bright and here's where it's dark. And you can definitely see a difference at, at, yeah. at the very beginning. Okay, so we can actually see this by eye if you go outside and we look at the sky. So I'm going to instead have our unpolarized sun, is, this is the sun, going to be scattering off the sky. And again, the light that, the horizontal part of that that's coming in, that will create uh, light that is vertically, in this case, vertically polarized for us. And if instead I had light that's uh, horizontally polarized from the sun, that's not going to radiate toward us at all. And so if I look here with uh, horizontal polarization here, I don't, it, it looks very dark. And with vertical, it looks very bright. You can certainly see that. You can certainly see right, the big difference. Right, you can see the change yeah? right there. Yeah, so it's very bright, in this case vertical, very dim when it's horizontal. Again, depending, because we're looking at it sort of from the side. Okay, so if we come back to now our last graphic uh, about what happens when you are outside, if you look at the sky and the sun is scattering off the sky down to you, so maybe you're looking uh, straight up at the sky, for example, and then the point is that the light is going to be polarized when it comes down to you. And if you had polarizing sunglasses on, and maybe you do because you're trying to block the glare off of water or something like that, 
that, and you'd be able to see that. If you just take your glasses off and rotate them, you'll see the sky is going to be bright in one orientation and dark in another orientation. And in fact, there is a little picture of a bee on that last thing, and we'll talk about that next time. So bees, it turns out, can see the polarization of the sky. Oh, wow. And they use that to navigate, and that is its own interesting story that we will come back to. They can see it without any need for without, polarizing without glasses. Without any need for there. polarizing glasses, exactly right. right. Paul, thank you so much.